I have one dog there. I'm filling this with some manure that came in in a trailer, cleaning the trailer. Maya's been lying there. She's now getting up because I'm talking. She was lying in that tray. I've just been unloading these wonderful mulches to continue putting in. Oh, look, I left. I was wondering where that mug was. This is a rose that somebody gave me as a gift. It's a miniature rose. It's looking really well. But this is a plant that one of my fans, one of you guys gave me. I love it. Plant whisperer. Anyway, that should probably go into the kitchen. It is leftover coffee. But been doing a big organize here of um, leveling that out in there. And these trays used to be my foot baths for sheep, but uh, I don't have to bathe for foot rot anymore and have very little scald. When uh, I started out the sheep, I would have to give them foot baths sometimes several times a month because the scald was so bad and the foot rot. Now I've pretty much eliminated foot rot from the land. Oh, there's Bear. He's now on the trailer that I'm finishing mucking out. Are you there being helpful? Are you being helpful? Yes. But because I'm breeding to try and get rid of scald as much as possible, I can now use the foot baths, well rinsed, for my young trees and plants so that they can have kind of water trays. In the winter, I'll have to take it down again. But this is, so I've got to, this is the wood chip that was under there leveling it and I've had to level it out and take the wood chip out here. So this whole area, I'm gonna make more level. Here's all my baby trees, spindle, and shrubs. So there's a uh, spindle, rowans, oak, all kinds of things here. And here's more mature ones that are several years old. So they like to be in shelter and shade. I had lots of weed suppressor plastic down, uh, but I'm now using cardboard because I think that is much better. And look at that. I'm gonna have to dig that out. I think I'm gonna give that plant. I have loads somewhere else in the garden and I planted that years ago. I think I'm gonna give those to my niece for her garden. She's got a shady area in her garden and she wants, and I think that's a big dramatic plant. I'll have to tell her that. These will have to be transplanted somewhere else. Then up here, past here, bits of dead bamboo. These are my salvias. You can see these were all gifts. Um, these salvias, wonderful. This is a rose that I took a cutting of from a friend's rose bush. This is about, this must be three or four years old now at this stage. It's a magnificent rose. I actually should stake it up and because it's leaning out, you can see more shoots. This is an iris, which I bought thinking it was kind of a rusty brown because I wanted it to go with the yellow blooms and this plant here, but no, it turned out to be a really rich blue. My lemon tree and that flower is over, but oh, they smell magnificent. So this is my smelly corner. So there's a bench there and the sweet Williams, the irises, there's another rose, that rose there. See, I've got a weed right in there to keep the weeds out of the bed. That is another red rose from the same rose brush of a friend that I did a cutting of. Here's a dog rose is taking over this corner. And my poor lavender is underneath there. This is a delicious smelling jasmine. So basically I can sit here Basically, I can sit here, oh, and I can smell the sweet William, the jasmine, and the dogs. 
I can smell the dogs. And then over here are the irises and the salvia and in the heat. And there's some lavenders for, that I took out of pots that I had for years in pots. So yeah, I can, I've got all my doggy friends. <laughs> anyway, it smells delicious here. And as the sun heats up, the scent heats up as well. Oh, and then we walk down towards, excuse me, these are, I'm going to be placing these across here, I think, or them, I don't know. It's an indecision at the moment. There's one of my lavenders that I recently planted out of a pot. I had them in a pot for four or five years and they were beginning to say, no, we don't like the pot. So I took that one out and that one, it's not doing very well over there. So this is walking back down to the vine house with all my baby trees and plants. And I have to, these I've, are hardening out. They've, these cannas were inside all winter. And these uh, begonias there, this is a lily and more begonias and they're just hardening out. I'm just put them out there now. And these are going to go back inside. These are calendula uh, to keep green fly away from my tomatoes. And my tomatoes, what I do is I pot with my rich compost of manure, wood chip, straw mixture. But the top layer, I do a... Um, I do some bought because it's sterile. It's sterile in the sense that it doesn't have a lot of seeds. My potting compost has loads of seeds. And so I prefer not to weed. But look, my zucchini or courgettes, whatever you want to call them, are doing really well. This is a pumpkin. This pumpkin hasn't come alive yet. There's another pumpkin. Over here are cucumbers, a series of different cucumbers. I still have to pot on tomatoes, but I've been potting tomatoes on. My strawberries I've been eating. That's why there's only one, two ripe ones. So these are early. And look, these are flowering again. I repotted them up and um, last year, and they said, woo, thank you, thank you. And they're flowering. This is, these are the other two. One is already flowered. Here's this one's flowered. And I was at TK Maxx and they had a fan sale and I bought some fans. And I'm hoping that will keep the mildew down. The grape vine is there, pruned back. So that is a tour of the garden work. Oh, and it's so boring, isn't it? Yes, so boring. Okay, reverse out. I'm gonna open this Velux. We have a very primitive form of holding the Velux up. You see this nail right here? Well, this is how it works. You do that, twist it sideways, and the nail holds it open. And that, my friends, is not posh gardening. That's just practicalities. Okay. That is my garden plot at the moment. Oh, this is the ericaceous soil for when I'm transplanting my hydrangeas because they need ericaceous soil. So when I'm potting them on, that's what... Oh, and that's where the cucumbers are gonna go. Cucumbers are gonna go all there so they get the really hot wall. So I've been busy. The table's been moved because of just doing stuff. And I don't know if any of that's going to take. That's um, this wisteria here. And it had a load of um, runners. And I had to prune them back. So I put a load of them, long ones, in here. And I have a bucket here of shorter ones that, oh gosh, they're in the sunlight. I should bring them out of the sunlight. And I'm hoping that some of them might take 
just root out of water. I just had so many. So look at that, the foxglove. Ah, oh, it's so lovely to see plants mature that you've planted and how beautiful that mixture is. Foxgloves, I never know what color they're gonna be. I don't care, they're wonderful. And look at that sage and the salvia. And look at that. I do love this. They're so beautiful. Look at that. They're so beautiful. Anyway, that is, oh, there's where the table got moved to with plants. I've got to redo a lot of that. Okay, there's a baby fox glove for next year. Oh, hello, kitty. This is looking glorious here as well. And look, a calla lily, is it, going, is it going to unfurl? And all these clematis are gonna start flowering. There is one. And look at the astilbe in under this Japanese maple. Look at that. Oh, when things come together, it's just heavenly. Okay, yeah. I do have a slug problem, but I also have hedgehogs, loads of hedgehogs. Oh, ow! That is what just happened. <laughs> oh, look at you. Anyway, you're, you're, yeah. Because I'm not, ow, no, your claws, look at his claws. Why do cats use their claws? I know it's needing and motherly and they love you so much, but it fucking hurts. Can you stop using your claws? I'm gonna dump you in the flower bed. There we go. 